thank the gentleman. It's unfortunate that today and for most of next week, we will continue engaging in the Democrats' day-long TV spectacles instead of solving the problems we were all sent to Washington to address. We now have a major trade agreement with Canada and Mexico ready for approval, a deal that would create jobs and boost our economy. Meanwhile, we have not yet approved funding for the government, which expires next week, along with funding for our men and women in uniform. Instead, the Democrats have convened us once again to advance their operation to topple a duly elected president. I'll note that five, five Democrats on this committee had already voted to impeach this president before the trump zelensky phone call occurred. In fact, Democrats have been vowing to oust President Trump since the day he was elected. So Americans can rightly suspect that his phone call with President Zelensky was used as an excuse for the Democrats to fulfill their Watergate fantasies. But I'm glad that on Wednesday, after the Democrats staged six weeks of secret depositions in the basement of the Capitol, like some kind of strange cult, the American people finally got to see this farce for themselves. They saw us sit through hours of hearsay testimony about conversations that two diplomats who had never spoken to the president heard secondhand, thirdhand, and fourthhand from other people. In other words, rumors. The problem of trying to overthrow a president based on this type of evidence is obvious. But that's what their whole case relies on, beginning with secondhand and thirdhand information cited by the whistleblower. That's why on Wednesday, the Democrats were forced to make the absurd argument that hearsay can be much better evidence than direct evidence. And just when you thought the spectacle couldn't get more bizarre, committee Republicans received a memo from the Democrats threatening ethics referrals if we out the whistleblower. As the Democrats are well aware, no Republicans here know the whistleblower's identity because the whistleblower only met with Democrats, not with Republicans. Chairman Schiff claimed not to know who it is, yet he also vowed to block us from asking questions that could reveal his or her identity. Republicans on this committee are left wondering how it's even possible for the chairman to block questions about a person whose identity he claims not to know. The American people may be seeing these absurdities for the first time, but Republicans on this dais are used to them. Until they secretly met with the whistleblower, Democrats showed little interest for the last three years in any topic aside from the ridiculous conspiracy theories that President Trump is a Russian agent. When you find yourself on the phone, like the Democrats did with Russian pranksters offering you nude pictures of Trump, and afterward you order your staff to follow up and get the photos, as the Democrats also did, then it might be time to ask yourself if you've gone out too far on a limb. Even as they were accusing Republicans of colluding with Russians, the Democrats themselves were colluding with Russians by funding the Steele dossier, which was based on Russian and Ukrainian sources. Meanwhile, they turn a blind eye to Ukrainians meddling in our elections because the Democrats were cooperating with that operation. This was the subject of a July 20th, 2017 letter sent by Senator Grassley to then Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. The letter raised concerns about the activities of Alexander Chalupa, a contractor for the Democratic National Committee who worked with Ukrainian embassy officials to spread dirt on the Trump campaign. As Senator Grassley wrote, Chalupa's, action, quote, Chalupa's actions appear to show that she was simultaneously working on behalf of a foreign government, Ukraine, and on behalf of the DNC and the Clinton campaign in an effort to influence not only the U.S. voting population, but U.S. government officials, unquote. 
after touting the Steele dossier and defending the FBI's Russia investigation, which are now being investigated by Inspector General Horowitz and Attorney General Barr, Democrats on this committee ignore Ukrainian election meddling, even though Chalupa publicly admitted to the Democrats' scheme. Likewise, they are blind to the blaring signs of corruption surrounding Hunter Biden's well-paid position on the board of a corrupt Ukrainian company while his father served as vice president and point man for Ukraine issues in the Obama administration. But the Democrats' media hacks only cared about that issue briefly when they were trying to stop Joe Biden from running against Hillary Clinton in 2015. As I previously stated, these hearings should not be occurring at all until we get the answers to three crucial questions the Democrats refuse to ask. First, what is the full extent of the Democrats' prior coordination with the whistleblower, and who else did the whistleblower coordinate this effort with? Second, what is the full extent of Ukraine's election meddling against the Trump campaign? And third, why did Burisma hire Hunter Biden? What did he do for them? And did his position affect any government actions under the Obama administration? I'll note that House Democrats vowed they would not put the American people through a wrenching impeachment process without bipartisan support, and they have none. Add that to their ever-growing list of broken promises and destructive deceptions. In closing, Mr. Chair, the President of the United States released his transcript uh, right before the hearing began. I think it's important that I read this into the record so that there's no confusion over this first phone call that occurred on April 21st with President-elect Zelensky, and I'd like to read it. The President, I'd like to congratulate you on a job well done, and congratulations on a fantastic election. Zelensky, good to hear from you. Thank you so very much. It's nice to hear from you and I appreciate the congratulations. The President, that was an incredible election. Zelensky, again, thank you so very much. As you can see, we tried very hard to do our best. We had you as a great example. The President, I think you will do a great job. I have many friends in Ukraine who know you and like you. I have many friends from Ukraine and frankly expected you to win. And it's really an amazing thing that you've done. I guess in a way, I did something similar. We're making tremendous progress in the US. We have a, the most tremendous economy ever. I just wanted to congratulate you. I have no doubt you will be a fantastic president. Zelensky, first of all, thank you so very much again for the congratulations. We in Ukraine are an independent country, an independent Ukraine. We're going to do everything for the people. You are, as I said, a great example. We are hoping we can expand on our jobs as you did. You will also be a great example for many. You are a great example for our new managers. I'd also like to invite you, if possible, to the inauguration. I know how busy you are, but if it's possible for you to come to the inauguration ceremony, that would be great. Great for you to do to be with us on that day. The President, that's very nice. I'll look into that. And give us a date, at the very minimum, we'll have a great representative or more from the United States will be with you on that great day. So we will have somebody at a minimum, a very, very high level, and will be with you. Really an incredible day for an incredible achieve achievement. Zelensky, again, thank you. We're looking forward to your visit, to the visit of a high level delegation. But there's no words that can describe our wonderful country how nice, warm, and friendly our people are, how tasty and delicious our food is, and how wonderful Ukraine is. Words cannot describe our country, so it would be best for you to see it yourself. So if you can come, that would be great. So again, I invite you to come. The President, well, I agree with you about your country, and I look forward to it. When I owned Miss Universe, they always had great people. Ukraine always very well represented, was always very well represented. When you're settled in and ready, I'd like to invite you to the White House. We'll have a lot of things to talk about, but we're with you all the way. Zelensky, thank you for the invitation. 
we accept the invitation and look forward to the visit. Thank you again. The whole team and I are looking forward to the visit. Thank you for the congratulations, and I think it will still be great if you could come and be with us on this, be with us on this important day. The results are incredible. They're very impressive for us. So it will be absolutely fantastic if you could come on that day. The President, very good. We'll let you know very soon, and we will see you very, very soon regardless. Congratulations, and please say hello to the Ukrainian people and your family. Let them know I send my best regards. Well, thank you, Zelensky. Well, thank you. You have a safe flight and see you soon. President, take care of yourself and give a great speech today. You take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Zelensky, thank you very much. It's difficult for me, but I will practice English and I will meet in English. Thank you very much. The president laughing. All oh, that's beautiful to hear. That's really good. I could not do it in your language. I'm very impressed. Thank you so much. Zelensky, thank you so much. The president, good day. Good luck. I'm glad I was able to read that into the record so the, now the American people know the very first call uh, that President Trump had with President Zelensky. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Mr. Chairman.